Help Show. I am your host, Craig Chamberlain, and this is the PCM Tech Talk Live segment. That's right, PCM Tech Talk Live, where we talk tech live with you guys, my subscribers, my favorite, favorite subscribers in the entire world. And of course, as you know, we're all about the free downloads in the Tech Talk Live, so we try to come up with free solutions to your problems. Of course, we open up the show with a small, brief segment where I talk about a specific topic. In this case, I'm going to be talking about Google Glass. As you guys know, Google debuted another big demo video of the Google Glass experience. If you haven't found it yet, check it out, Project Glass, on the Google Plus website. Uh, Google Glass is a very exciting experiment for those of us who are involved in tech. So I'm really excited about talking about it. Now, the live show broadcasts live 9 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Thursday, on weekdays. Monday through Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern to 10 p.m. Eastern. First 15 minutes of the show are dedicated to a topic. Then you guys can ask any questions you'd like. They don't have to be on topic. It can be anything you can think of. And I will try my best to answer them. If I cannot answer them, I will direct you to my community page, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community. It is a Google Plus community. We're running 140 members strong. And these guys are awesome. Okay? I got the coolest community on the interwebs. <laughs> They're awesome. And uh, they will be more than happy to help you out with whatever computer problems you might have, because I'm only one guy. I work 40 to 50 hour weeks. You know, I do this part time for fun. And I got one kid, wife, another kid on the way. I'm keeping busy. I'm keeping busy. So I'm only one guy. I can only do so much for you. But I'm dedicated to you guys 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Thursday. And I hang out at the community most of the other times. Also, remember free downloads, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash downloads. And also, 450 free video tutorials and guides, pcmtechhelp.com or pcmtechhelp.com forward slash YouTube. Now let's talk about Google Glass. What is Google Glass? Have you heard of Project Glass? Project Glass has been going on for a couple years now. It officially debuted as a demo probably last year. I don't know the exact date and time, um, but it's been kind of a big buzz that's been going around. Uh, and a lot of people have been just kind of talking about it. Would you wear a pair of glasses that has an embedded video feed in the top right corner? Sort of like a virtual HUD for your real life. And uh, it also allows you to shoot a camera. It's got a little video camera in the uh, top right hand corner of it. And you can talk about all kinds of great things with this kind of time, type of technology. And they've released some demos of some really cool features with it. But it's called Project Glass. I recommend you guys check it out on uh, on Google Plus, Project Glass is a great circle to follow. There's five, only 517,000 people following it right now. But they got a couple cool feeds going on right now. Some great photos of people wearing them, kind of showing off the style. Uh, they got different colors, best adventure of the year for 2012. Uh, just life through the glasses. They got this really cool video of people skydiving and looking at each other through it. That's another cool one. This is plus.google.com forward slash plus Project Glass. Check that out, and you can watch. You can read the whole feed. Go through and see everything that they've been talking about. That would be the place to go to see the latest and greatest with Project Glass. Google's done a good job keeping us updated and in the loop on that particular product. I'm really kind of excited to see what they're going to do with this technology. And as you know, today's guide, or today's video, uh, let me get my overview here just so I know what I'm referring to. Um, what is Google Glass, or what is Project Glass? Project Glass is a unique idea that Google came up with and it's essentially the idea is to create a visual HUD for reality. Kind of like a, a, a HUD based reality like you play in a video game. A lot of people play video games now where you're like in a suit and you have the full mask but you also have a HUD in that mask so you can actually look at your surroundings and have a visual HUD display when you're actually going through you know whether it be warfare or combat, and it gives you statistics and information that you might need. Well, Google Glass takes this concept and it applies it to the everyday person. Uh, Project Glass is trying to kind of revolutionize how people use tech in a lot of ways. Now, I use a, a Bluetooth headset, and I use it for my phone calls a lot of times, and I also use it to send te texts and things like that. So I'm pretty excited about this concept because now I'll also have visual layout and it'll have embedded uh, internet in it as well. So I can actually use just my glasses to not only make phone calls, but engage with people over social networks, have video chats with people while I'm standing there, and a lot of really cool things like that. So they have a lot of cool ideas. And it's like, kind of like a semi-transparent HUD. It's not like it's this big bright screen in your eyeball. It's in the top right corner, a lot of it is. 
Uh, but there's also a lot of talks of them being able to do a lot of advanced capabilities with this as well. Of course, you can monitor your GPS in the top right corner of your HUD. You can uh, do video chats with other people. You can take photos. Uh, you can share live video feeds. That's kind of a cool idea. But project, essentially, Google Glass is Google's approach to revolutionizing our how we use tech daily, just our, our daily tech experience. And it'll be very interesting to see how it actually hammers out. I believe a pair right now will run you about $1,500. It's going to be the first release. Um, I don't think it's out yet. I don't think you can actually purchase it yet. But the first release or first wave of glasses is going to be $1,500 per pair. So that is Google Glass. Now you're going to hear a lot of uh, tech guys floating around out there right now, especially like Leo Laporte. Um, and, and what's really going to happen this year is kind of cool. Uh, I said, what is wearable tech? That's the next question I wanted to cover. Wearable tech is kind of like a way to engross ourselves into wearable technologies uh, so that we can actually have our daily accessories be powered and uh, connected to the internet and uh, just more comfortable. So style, tech style is going to be a big thing this year. Uh, weight wristbands, I don't know if you guys watched the CES or the computer, uh, Consumer Electronics Show this year. A lot of wristband type things where you have a full LED, programmable LED on there. You can change the colors or you can change uh, what it displays, social networks, things like that. Apple, of course, is work, working on their new watch that they've been talking about, very hush-hush. A lot of prototypes floating around out there on that. Uh, so that's a wearable tech device. Um, there's a lot of talk about rings. I saw some actually. There's like these rings that the company is developing that actually has a built-in clock and it rotates on the ring and you can change the LED colors and things like that. And this is going to become more and more common as you kind of, as the technology evolves. Wearable tech is going to be a big thing coming up this year. A lot of companies are going to be talking about it. Because if you think about it, now we've come to a point where we we want our technology with us all the time. We got our phone, okay? We always want to be connected. So now that we have gotten accustomed to always being connected, now the idea is making us always connected and comfortable in the process. You know, why make it so I have to go down here, pull out a phone that has a really low battery life, when you can have a pair of glasses that might have a very, very long battery life and a basic HUD that'll make it maybe take over a few of those functions for me. Uh, or you could have a watch that handles some basic functions for you. So the idea is finding some kind of personalization to the way you use your tech any wearable psychological environment. And it's a very cool idea because if you think about it, LEDs, OLEDs are kind of revolutionizing this. If you haven't seen bendable screens with OLEDs yet, you're missing out. Very cool stuff that's coming out with those OLEDs. And of course, OLED can be a transparent material, completely bendable, very difficult to damage and break, and it's very low power consumption. A lot of potential in this kind of technology for wearable tech. So. Something to really kind of keep an eye out for. Uh, this is going to be a big thing coming out this year. I wouldn't, I personally won't run out and buy it unless, of course, I make so much money on my show that I was like, okay, I got to demo this to my users. Uh, then, of course, I would do it. But um, actually, maybe it'd be a good write-off. <laughs> got to get my Google Glass. Uh, but um, it's kind of like a really cool new way of revolutionizing the whole connectivity issue, personalization of technology. Very cool thing. But, uh, of course, we have to ask the question, is the world ready for glass? Okay, and that was the next question I wanted to get into here. Have we reached a point where we are comfortable with the idea of wearing a watch that is always connected to the Internet, wearing a pair of glasses that is always connected to the Internet, that has a camera attached to it, that everything we see and do can be transmitted and, and posted online in an instant, in the second that it happens, everywhere we're going? Are we at a point where we are comfortable with that idea? That's a really, really good question. In my opinion, we aren't moving in the opposite direction. People are moving in the direction of becoming more and more comfortable with the idea. Doesn't necessarily make it a good thing. Obviously, there's privacy concerns and security concerns. But as a nation, in the U.S. in particular, or wherever you might be, or maybe as a people, We've become, at least our generation or younger generation, have become so accustomed to the idea that we're always online and, and everything we put out there is always out there that we just, we're used to it. We get it. That's just how it works. 
And I think really we're going to be the target market for glass for these types of environments. It's not going to be the older generations who actually legitimately have concerns about privacy. It's going to be us younger kids who are, you know, we've just gotten so accustomed to not really having that kind of privacy that we will go ahead and just accept it as it is, as it is and say, wow, this is cool, you know, and we'll just do it, you know. Uh, but I'm kind of cool with the idea because in, in reality uh, there's – I'm usually pretty security conscious about the things that I use, the tools that I use. The average user might not be. So really, the the majority of users, I would say yes, they are ready for this kind of technology. So I think that's why you're starting to see Apple finally hit the market with something, or they're talking about it, and Google talking about finally hitting the market with glass. Uh, obviously, they've done test studies, and you know they're not idiots. They're not going to release a product that they don't think the market's ready for. Uh, but but I would say maybe this time four years ago we wouldn't have been. But since technology has advanced so rapidly into the mobile platform with tablets and phones and touch screens and just everything, and then now the OLEDs, we're really reaching kind of like a peak technology time for our generation, and it's awesome. I love it. You know, I love this stuff. But it's really a, like OLED to me. It just excites me. This OLED technology. All the cool things that are going to be able to come out in the next three to four years, you're going to see OLED screens on, and you guys are going to be amazed. Even the basic stuff at the Consumer Electronics Show was awesome. Very cool stuff. Very cool technology. So I guess we go into the next part, which is what are the long-term implications of a technology such as glass? I think glass, although not being the only wearable tech out there, glass, its philosophy, its idea, if it catches on quickly and it becomes extremely popular, pretty much sets in stone or sets the tone for the future of wearable tech. Uh, what will happen this year, you guys are going to see, is if the Apple uh, Watch and the Google Glass, both projects hit it this year, odds are they're competing with each other as to when that's going to happen, um, in a, in a cost-effective way, of course. We're going to see whether or not wearable tech is the next trend or not. I believe, it, I believe it's going to be. I think that's going to be the next big thing for everybody who's going out there and buying the latest and greatest gadget. I think phones, iPhones, touchscreen smartphones are going to become comfortable. We're great with the idea. We still love our smartphones, but it's not going to be as hyped and jazzy. You know? I think a lot of people are going to be talking about wearable tech instead of actually talking about cell phones. So I think it's going to be the next exciting technology. So the long-term implications of glass essentially are it it, along with Apple's new wearable tech, are going to tell us this is going to be where it began. Okay, This is going to be the, the wearable tech revolution started, much like Apple when they released the first iPod device really said, okay, this is going to be the, this is revolutionizing the MP3 industry. That's, that's what it is. And then Apple again came out and released the iPhone, revolutionized the industry. And then Google came out and created an open app, uh, open mobile Android operating system, revolutionized, revolutionized the industry. And so this might be another landmark, I guess, or you could say marking stone in history of tech. You know, if you're really paying attention to it, you're going to see it happen. And, and the timing couldn't be any better. With the hybrid of OLED, where our generation's at with comfort on this type of tech, it really is a great time for them to strike on this. And I, and I hope that they do completely do it this year. So now my question to you guys. Before I get into your questions, of course, will you be buying yours? Will you be going out and buy your Google Glasses? $1,500 out of the box. You're going to hold out and see how it goes? It is really fancy. Remember, go to, if, you have, if you're just joining us, if you want to read about Google Glass, all the latest and greatest, I can't even fill you in on all the details here. I can just tell you it's really cool. But if you go to plus.google.com forward slash plus project glass, you will see a whole feed of everything they've been talking about all the way up until today. Lots of really cool videos of it, demos, uh, people who are wearing it, uh, different kinds of styles and designs that can go with it. And it's very, very exciting to see what they're going to do. Uh, with that technology. But are you going to go buy something like this? Would you wear wearable tech? Do you trust it? Do you, are you comfortable with the idea of wearing tech? Those are my questions to you guys. Go ahead and answer them at the YouTube video. Remember, all your questions have to be posted at the YouTube video because I can only watch the questions at a single location so that I can answer them. But that's Google Glass in a nutshell. We've gone over quite a bit in this first 15 minutes of the video, but I just wanted to cover that so that now we can get into your questions and we can see 
just where you guys stand on the Google Glass technology. Yay or nay? Terrible idea? Great idea. What is it? Is it both? Is it all of them? Is it a lot? Is it nothing? Is it yes? No? Maybe so? Not quite? Yes, I'm there. Gotta have one. Not even interested. What is it for you guys that you want to see come out of the Google Glass craze? Lord Lightning says, first, take that, Tom. A lot of my community members make a huge emphasis in jumping in and trying to be the first to put up the videos. Very exciting theme that's been going on, I think, since YouTube started. Always want to be first. Uh, like I said, the questions don't have to be related to Google Glass. So let's go ahead and answer your guys' questions, and we'll get the ball rolling there. Hey, Craig, I installed Office 2003 on my PC, and every time I start Outlook, it says mappy 32dll is missing or corrupt. I fixed it by renaming program files, common files, system, MS Mappy, blah, 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 but it still won't work. Okay, uh, MS, MAPI 32.dll is missing or corrupt. Uh, have, you done a, have you done a hard drive scan on this, this drive before? Um, Outlook can be finicky. Uh, I'm hoping that this is a licensed copy of Outlook. If not, or if it is, or even if it isn't, make sure you download the latest updates for Microsoft Outlook as well. I've had to troubleshoot some really niche issues in pirated copies, or what people told me weren't pirated copies of software, uh, and, and a lot of them are DLL related. Uh, it could be that uh, the files are actually, how long did it work for? I, do, I would like to know that beforehand as well. Uh, but typically, if it's a fresh install and you're just starting to get the issue, which it sounds like you just installed it, then you're looking at maybe there was an issue with either the installation was a bad installation. In other words, it was a bad copy of the, of the program. It does happen, not often. Your hard drive is starting to have issues with installation, so you might want to do a scan disk. Or it could be that you have to download the latest updates for both Windows and for Microsoft Outlook. These are all steps you have to take with installing Microsoft Outlook. Microsoft Outlook is great, a great product, but it can be very frustrating. Uh, I do recommend to people Libre or OpenOffice. I have OpenOffice at my website, pcmtechhub.com forward slash downloads. Both of them are completely open source. You can use them free for business use as much as you would like, however much you would like. So I usually push people in that direction if Office isn't working out for them. Uh, and LibreOffice will actually support the latest Outlook fi uh, Office files, whereas your Office 2003 will not. So something to think about when you actually move into that area. Bortovec Hemlich, Hem Hemlich, I think. Craig, I made the intro that's super leap on its, <laughs> it's on the Google Plus thing, okay. Uh, I think he developed a new intro, which, or maybe it was a, I think it was a joke intro. I don't know, I haven't looked at it yet, Bortovec. I'm gonna have to check it out, but I don't wanna play it because I can't play anything on here that risks potential copyright infringement. So I'm gonna have to check it out after the show. I know it sucks, but um, we'll see how it goes. I'll check it out, I'm pretty excited actually. If you guys haven't joined the community yet, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community, that's where we live outside of the live broadcast. And it's a community of people who love sharing free software, free tools, and having fun kind of helping everybody take care of their computers and things like that. A lot of cool stuff going on there, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community. And it's a Google Plus community, so it's really kind of a cool way to engage with other people. 140 members in like a month. I'd say we're growing pretty quick. We're getting there. Dr. Green Sox says, welcome back, Dr. Green. Google Glass? Hi, Craig. A lot of people aren't even aware of Google Glass. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about, raising awareness here a little bit. Check out Project Glass. Google it. Project, Project Glass. A lot of really cool things going on in the tech world. It's a very exciting time for tech, actually. Uh, Rev1990X, welcome back, says hi, Mr. Chamberlain. Hello, Compton Sue says hi. Thanks for all the free downloads, Compton. I'm doing my best to bookmark them as much as possible. Now, this is a good time for me to tell you guys, I am working on a huge project now at work, so I haven't been able to really hammer out a lot of my regular, uh, my, my high production content yet. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to work overtime for the next two weeks, so I'm just giving you a heads up. Uh, the live show is my priority. I want to make sure I hit all these 9 p.m. Eastern to 10 p.m. Eastern live shows, Monday through Thursday. So that's why you haven't seen any new full-blown videos yet. I just haven't had the time, but don't worry, they're coming. But uh, I appreciate all of your submissions, Compton. Thank you for, uh, for all your contributions to the community. It doesn't go unnoticed. Rev1990X says, everything is possible this year. I agree. It's an exciting year for tech. Very exciting year for tech. <laughs> 
<laughs> X Lord Lightning says, if Google Glass has Windows 8 Metro UI, I'll slam them glasses on Steve Ballmer's face. And I'll be standing right behind you cheering, buddy. <laughs> the Metro UI on Google Glass, you're like, how do I how do I search? How do I get to my desktop? <laughs> I hope a pair of glasses doesn't have a uh, I hope a pair of glasses doesn't have a desktop. Maybe it does. Maybe, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. From what I understand, it's pretty much all voice activated, which I'm cool with, actually. I don't like touching anything. So you can launch all your applications and, and, and tell it. Literally, you just have to tell it what to do, which works great for my, uh, my Bluetooth headset. And, and a lot of people are like, really? You think you can trust that to do what you want it to do? You'd be amazed how voice recognition software, Siri and Google Search, their voice recognition is phenomenal right now. So it's really kind of exciting. I'm kind of excited to see what they're going to do with it. I wish I had a demo. I wish I had a pair. Maybe somebody from Google will watch my videos and send me a pair, and I'll be wearing one. I'll be like, what's going on, guys? And I'll always be looking up in the right-hand corner. So I'll be watching the feed. I'm like, hey, guys, welcome to the PCM Tech Help Show. I'm so glad you could come out to make it. And uh, today we're going to talk about, wait, what was that? Okay, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> that's, really, that's really what's going to happen with Google Glass. Everyone's going to be doing this on the road. What? What do you mean there's a car coming? I don't know what you're talking about. No, I don't see it in my video feed. My GPS doesn't show any traffic. <laughs> That's going to how it goes. Rev1990X, supercharged PC, uh, this is a PlayStation 4, supercharged PC architecture, x86 CPU, 8 cores, enhanced PC GPU, 2 teraflops, 8 gigabytes of RAM, GDDR5, and a local HDD, so a local hard drive. So it's an x86, huh? 32-bit? Which actually, for gaming, is about right, actually. You don't, most games are still written in 32-bit. Uh, but uh, 8 cores, that's it? Only 8 cores in the PlayStation 4? I didn't have enough. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, hardware specs, specs for gaming machines mean nothing to me. Um, those are great. Great, great, great hardware specifications. But you know what? You know what sells consoles? Games. And you know who has, in my opinion, the best collection and well-rounded availability of games at a really, really reasonable price? Sorry. I have to go with Microsoft on this one. I'm not a fanboy of anything in particular, but Microsoft really nailed it with the 360. I mean, as far as all the projects they're working on between the Windows 8 Metro UI, which kind of sucks, and the Windows Phone, which kind of sucks, and the Surface Tablet, which is cool, but it's like way too late to the market. Uh, the, the the Xbox actually has kind of led the curve for console gaming, and so I got to give them a golf clap on that one. Uh, but um, specs don't mean a whole lot to me, especially when I don't know the price. So I could be getting if you say that's going to be six hundred bucks, I'd say I can probably build a better computer than that for six hundred bucks. But uh, at the end of the day, why do we buy a console? It's for the games. So once I see a preliminary game release for both the Xbox 720 and the PlayStation 4, I will decide whether or not it's worth my time or money or energy to take a look at. So I'm not a fanboy either way, really. Dr. Green Sox, everyone's going to push their eyes out. Touchscreen glasses. Oh, man. Wait, was that, a, was that an abstract uh, Christmas story reference? You're going to push your eyes out, kid. <laughs> With them, with them touchscreen, van dang it, them freaking dang snagged snapper, they freaking. When I was a kid, we would take pictures and we'd put a put a paper clip up there. And we'd flip through the pictures to watch video in front of our faces. That's right. We walk uphill both ways while we're doing it. That's right. Dang damn it. X Lord Lightning says PlayStation Four has only eight gigabytes of RAM. Gaming computers have twenty-four gigabytes. Depends on the game. 8 gigs of RAM in the 32-bit architecture is actually pretty reasonable. And I think it's the cap. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Actually, I thought it was 4. Now, maybe that was just Windows cap. Interesting. Uh, XORD Lightning, do you think we'll have to pay for Google Glass Internet? That's an interesting question. Google's been investing heavily into radio towers and fiber and... Uh, there's a lot of testing benchmarks out there. There's obviously the, the town that renamed itself Google. Uh, to get the internet, the Google Fiber. Uh, so that's a good question. I don't know what Google has up their sleeves as far as long terms, but they're making a lot of moves that suggests that they will eventually get in the internet game. I did see a speed test from Google Fiber. It was like 900 megabytes, megabits per second or something insane like that. 
I was at speedtest.net. But uh, the, when they first talked about it four years ago, they were talking uh, 15 to 20 megabit per second speeds for $15 a month. That's what that was the first original rumor. And you guys remember the toilet network? Oh man, I wish I could remember the name of that. But there was a toilet network adapter. They had this whole gimmick, a flush DNS, I think it was called. You had to flush the modem cable down your toilet to get connectivity to the technicians. That was a good April Fool's joke. Yes, we'll have to pay. There's no doubt in my mind. We'll have to get the internet somehow. Uh, nothing like having a internet enabled device connecting to a satellite right next to your eyeball and brain, right? FDA approved. A Rev 1990X LOL Google Belt helps blind people find their way home with built-in GPS and vibrating eight-point all-around direction onto the belt. <laughs> you never know. It might get one of those cool accessory belts, man, like freaking Batman, but uh, has Wi-Fi. Got to have it. Or Iron Man. He had a cool digital belt that had, like, stuff on it or LEDs. I'm telling you, people are going to be wearing this stuff. People are going to be wearing this stuff. It's not It's not just going to be watches and glasses. It's going to be clothing. LE, OLED has that capability, this kind of stuff. And it only requires a small current, amount of current, to, to make something glow with OLED. So we'll see how it goes. Steve Wheeler says, just what we need techno technology being. Technology being. I don't know what that means. <laughs> X Lord Lightning X says, where is everyone? I finished my homework. Google Belt, got to have one. Good times, good times. Bee Hunter says, ha ha, I didn't. I don't know what you mean. Tom Proke says, time for bed. Good night, Tom. Thanks for coming out for a little bit. Rev 1990X says, yep, but graphics. Man, Sony, just take my money. <laughs> yeah, see, and this is what I mean. I don't buy on hardware anymore. I just don't. I really don't. Uh, it doesn't mean a whole lot to me, for, especially for gaming consoles. Um... And especially when they release, like, a new CPU architecture sometimes, I'm wondering if that PlayStation 4 has the newer architecture, because it actually puts a huge burden on developers, and developers have to start over again with a completely new programming environment, and it takes them usually a year or two just to get up to speed in order to make the games look as good as they did when they left the old system. Look at PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 3. That was a huge drop-off. If you look at the games coming out at the end of PlayStation 2 and at the beginning of PlayStation 3, there was a lot of issues they had to turn around with that. Lord Lightning says, what if Google made a gaming console? They kind of did. The Chromebook is. They just don't release their own games. But what video game console does? But uh, I don't think they have any interest in getting to the console market, as I can tell. I've never seen any rumors or hints that they're interested in that. That doesn't mean they won't eventually. But uh, I'm thinking gaming is going to become similar to what Steam's philosophy is. Steam has actually kind of pioneered the gaming trend. Okay, so they were the first ones to do the games on demand over the internet. Everybody was like, nobody will ever pay for that. Now everybody has it. And now they're building these cool little Steam boxes that are built in computers. They're basically a little computer that connects to Steam and connect to your TV. And you can buy your games and run them off of your Steam box. Awesome idea. You can use a controller and all kinds of awesome stuff with it. So they've come up with a cost effective console type PC that'll connect to your TV through HDMI and let you play PC games on your TV. Great idea. Very cool idea. And so Steam, once again, pushing the envelope for the PC gaming market. So I, eventually all these technologies will like become one because you see the trend moving into these hardware independent platforms. That's why Google Chrome runs on this, this browser interface, right? It runs on the browser interface because a browser will work on just about any operating system. Java has its own built-in VM. So Java just needs to be installed on whatever machine or device. And then when they, you launch the application, it runs it in the little Java operating system. It's independent from the host operating system. That's where a lot of technologies are going now. Virtualization, although it's still an old term because it's not really new cutting edge tech, virtualization is going to revolutionize uh, the hardware dependencies. The problem with virtualization typically is getting the most out of the hardware that you're virtualizing. But uh, it's been something they've been progressively getting better and better at. Everybody has. Uh, but a lot of operating systems, like even Google Android, is, is moving away from the idea that you have to have a specific set of hardware in order to play a game or run an application. You know, they want to get away from this. 
That's what the cloud's all about, too. Distributed gaming, distributed uh, cloud-based networking and things like that. That's what the whole idea is behind. And the infrastructure is new still. It's still only a couple years old. But we've made amazing strides. So... Um, you, <laughs> you accidentally turned on the capital letters and you can't turn them off. Caps lock button, man. <laughs> I noticed you put a little uh, smiley face after that, so I'm guessing it was a joke. Tom Broke says, us middle-aged folk do not like wearable tech. I know both Facebook and Google are in bed with the Fed. There's my answer. Like I said, it, it just really depends on the generation. Uh, I think our generation is more than happy. We'll salivate at the idea of wearing tech. We will salivate at the idea of I'll get scared if you have to start embedding it into your brain, uh, and I wouldn't put it past the generation after my generation to think that's an awesome idea. I think it's a horrible idea, because at least with wearable tech, you can take it off and step on it. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, they're coming after me. <laughs> you can crush it. You can destroy it. But if it's embedded, then you got to get those pliers, and you got to get a little lathe. It's like in the movies. you got to cut it out. you got to beep, step on it. Or nanotechnology, that's even more terrifying having something so tiny that you couldn't even find it if you wanted to on you that has integrated GPS and tracking. And, and, and these things aren't as science, science fiction as they were once talked about. They aren't. I mean, it's just it's kind of a scary time for privacy. Uh, it, it, Tom Prokes knows exactly what I'm talking about. Rev1990X has Google Glass. Yeah, I'll buy it. I hear you. I mean, it might not be out yet right now, but, uh, but you know, it, it could... It could uh, it could revolutionize the wearable tech industry, but at the current price, obviously, not everybody's going to go out and buy it. Bordovic Henley says, "I wait for nano suits to come out. Nano suits are a cool idea, actually. You were, the, I believe, it's the nano fibers you're referring to, um, and they're capable of reacting to clothing uh, or different materials, different environments. Uh, nano suits, in particular, they talked about making cloaking devices with nano suits. Essentially, there's nano uh, little little nano." devices on, in, embedded in the fibers that can actually reflect light so you can actually kind of create a, or not reflect, but illuminate a camouflage based image around the person so you can do things like camouflage. Uh, there's nano based technologies that can adjust themselves based on uh, impact for like bulletproof vests and things like this. Uh, nano, there's another cool nano thing I saw on Google Plus floating around that prevents clothing from being able to be stained. There's actually a nanofiber that actually can create a resistance or a basically a nano resistance to uh, stain from staining materials. I think put like a work glove in, in oil, pulled it back out, and the oil didn't really stick because of the, the way they had engineered the glove. All kinds of interesting things with wearable tech. Steve Wheeler says, I will not buy a, I'm assuming you mean uh, Google Glasses. And that's cool. Every, to each their own. Hey, as turtle, try updating keyboard drivers. Oh, I hope he was, he was serious. I figured he was just joking. <laughs> Jack Barth says, Google Glass, nothing special to me. Maybe in the far future, but it's going to need a little time. And that's kind of the big thing. Uh, us tech guys get excited about stuff that's just new. And very few of us, unless we're wealthy, independently wealthy, go out and buy it. We get excited because about the future prospects of this kind of technology. If a product like Google Glass can succeed in the mainstream in its current form, like I said earlier in the video, it, it puts a basically a, sets the tone for the rest of that market. So if they are able to create a product that is so good out of the box that can really kind of push that market into the whole new thing, everyone else, all the investors, everybody else just jumps on board, man. They're like, this is a great idea. It'll be just like Google Glass. We gotta, we gotta start doing this. This is gonna be the new thing. Uh, but usually you have to have some kind of a leader pioneer that that era of tech. And, and between Apple and Google, it's hard to believe it's not gonna get pioneered by either one of them. And so all the other third parties and, and manufacturers are gonna you know, jump into research and development mode, and they're going to start developing their own. And the same progression is going to happen from the iPhone to the phones we have now. iPhone, 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 Android, iPhone, Android, iPhone, Android, Windows Mobile Phone, iPhone, Android, Windows Mobile Phone, uh, Linux, Ubuntu Phone. And it's this progression of tech that was pioneered by an original company. People didn't realize how much they needed it. And even 
the other companies didn't realize how much we wanted it or needed it. Maybe not needed it, but wanted it. And so that's what excites us guys in tech, is that it, if a big company like Google releases something like that, it can really set the tone for what people are going to be doing in the next couple of years. Really kind of cool. Uh, B Hunter says, maybe. I think Google Glass needs to evolve a little more. And, and great mindset to have. I don't like to pay premium pricing to be a guinea pig. Somebody had uh, posted the NVIDIA Titan earlier. It looks awesome. This project looks awesome for graphics cards. I would never pay $1,000 for a graphics card. I would never pay 10 times as much money for a graphics card than I need to <laughs> to be basically a guinea pig in the first generation of product. Now, I have no interest in doing that whatsoever. Um, like, the, like I said, the only reason I would do it is because it's like a write-off, because I could do a review on it. I could do something on the show about it. But that would be really the only reason. It wouldn't be because I have to have them. Uh, I'm one of those guys who likes to wait for things to evolve, too. PC Pro says, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Steve Wheeler says, I will not buy any Google Glasses. Too much money. I agree. But as with any technology, the price pretty much gets cut in half yearly. Um, unless it's like LCDs. They took a while to get cut back because of the manufacturing costs. But most tech has like a two-year life cycle and like a, a one-year price drop of, like I would say it's maybe 20 to 30%. So usually within two years, the tech drops almost 50%. Unless you're a big prestigious name like Apple, they tend to retain their value a lot better. But in general, tech drops about half price every two years. So it won't take long for, well, it might take a couple years, but they will become cost effective, much like tablets have become cost effective. Uh, the tablets came out, what, four years ago? The first iPad, was it five years ago? Maybe six? Now you can go back and buy an iPad 1 for less than $100. Now you have tons of these tablet manufacturers developing these little $50 to $100 tablets for even kids. But it started out as a piece of technology that cost six, dollars $700 out of the box. But now it's a standard, you know, within six years. So it won't take long. Craig, how do I remove the hissing noise when recording a microphone? I use a pop filter. Is there any way to do this in Audacity or WavePad? I don't do a whole lot of audio editing. Uh, but your best bet uh, on, on hissing is hissing is background noise, and most of that's picked up from your mic itself. Um, you need a better mic. Uh, the amount of editing you're going to have to do to eliminate hissing is going to be frustrating, and it's never going to sound right. You know, Even if you go in and edit it and do some removals of certain frequencies and wavelengths, which a lot of audio cleanup tools are out there for that. I've, I've read about them. I've never used them. Um, I would strongly... You can get such a powerful over-the-counter mic now for maybe twenty thirty dollars and it will for all the time you're gonna put into editing your audio every time it'll be worth the twenty thirty bucks just to go out and buy a solid uh, mic that won't pick up the background noise you have to have something that has a built-in uh, I think it's called like a, a cardoid uh, some kind of a, it's like a shock absorber for background noise and uh, and for popping when you go pop 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 um, you basically you want to have something decent for doing audio is critical when making content. Uh, when you're making that first impression, when you're doing YouTube or any kind of video, you can have terrible video, but if you have terrible audio, people get really, really turned off. Uh, terrible video sucks. I mean, like this is in 360p, but it, it can be people can live with the visual being an issue. But audio, they I did bad audio for a couple videos. It just kills it, kills the popularity. Don't devalue your audio. Talk to BigNate84 also. He might have some better suggestions. He's part of the community. PCMTechHelp.com forward slash community. I know you're part of it. I'm just letting everybody know. We do have some guys in the community who are specialists on this stuff. And I encourage you guys to go there and join it so we can get that uh, your questions answered on that. Lord Lightning says, this is a totally legit Office 2003. My parents bought it when I was two. What? Wow. Totally legit Office 2003. Well, when they bought it, it was two. Okay. Uninstall it, make sure all your Windows updates are installed, reinstall it, and when, if they bought it that long ago, make sure you download the service packs for Office. Install the service packs as well. Give that a go, because that can also have a lot of impact on it. Um, Lord Lightning is suggesting to Jack a couple of repair or compressing options in Audacity, which is a free audio editing tool, pcmtechup.com forward slash downloads. I have that one on there as well. It's open source, Audacity. A lot of people use it to record their own music tracks. Awesome piece of software. Very powerful. 
Uh, Jack, let me know if that works out for you as well. I'd be curious. Uh, but like I said, you can you can try to clean it up. It might help a little bit, but I'm telling you, it's it's going to be it's brutal. <laughs> Lord Lightning says, in the world of Google, one project will change the world. Google Glass in theaters February 22nd. <laughs> I uh, can't believe I'm up at 2.19 a.m. watching this. Hey, 2.12 Nate. 2 12, no, 2.12 Nath. Thank you for coming out. All flat for you, my friend. Everyone commend him for coming out and, and, experiencing, and, and sharing this experience with us as a whole. As a whole. Who knows? SharePoint. How do I feel about SharePoint as an administrator? As with any collaboration software package, I hate them. <laughs> you know why I hate collaboration software? It isn't the software. It's getting people to use the software. That's a nightmare. Um, you can obviously share and sync all of your, dot, all of your files and your content and things like that and uh, work together on projects and tasks. And this all sounds wonderful. Apps, it's a dream come true in any business environment. But remember, I got a degree in informatics with a cognate in business. I was raised by a business owner and an entrepreneur. So let's just put it this way. What sounds good in theory in tech very seldom actually works well in application. Because many, many businesses, it's very difficult to get them to adopt the idea of how much training and accountability is necessary for a software to be fully adopted by its user base. Out of the box, if your whole team decided to commit to it and they all wanted to jump on board, there's just a lot of psychological aspects you have to overcome. you got to change the way people have done their business. It all sounds wonderful if you have a team who's committed, on board, excited about the project, willing to learn, willing to get trained. But as you know, or as anybody in business knows, these are ideal conditions that are very seldomly available in most environments. So, I love the idea of collaborative software design and collaborative working. Uh, if you can get it implemented in a way that will work with whatever business you're trying to implement it to, I think more time and effort should be take in taking that into consideration than qualifying the product. And that's that's so hard to do because you need to literally have a plan in place that will make this adoption or adaptation into business a successful thing. Very interesting topic. I might have to talk about it in a future video. But getting users to adopt technology is a very difficult thing every tech guy is going to have to face at some point. Uh, even if it's with people they work with computers on or if it's a whole team of people in their company. Uh, this is a practical business concept. This isn't a tech concept. Uh, and, and a lot of people fail to recognize it. Because when you look at a piece of software, you got to understand, when you look at software, you look at it through your eyes. You look at it as all the potential that this software has to offer you and your company. When a foreign user or a non-tech guy uses, works at this software, they look at it as a threat, especially collaboration software. Other people are going to have access to my information. There are security concerns. I'm going to have a learning curve. It's going to affect my commission rate because I'm going to have to learn how to use this. I've got a system in place that's working now. Why do I have to change it? There's just a lot of convincing that needs to take place on every level. Sales, management, accounting, you name it. Whoever's a part of the collaborative effort. So, very good question. That's from PC Pros. And if you have a YouTube channel, it looks like you do, uh, make sure you join the community. Thanks for coming out. Uh, oh, okay, you're just, that's just your name. You're probably a local repair tech, it looks like, or maybe a local uh, integrator. Uh, very cool. Um, it, make sure you join the community. You'll be a welcome addition. Uh, if you know anything about SharePoint and, and administration, you'd be a very welcome addition to the, the community. Uh, I'm trying to get as many people in there as I can who, who love this stuff. And you wouldn't be watching a YouTube video on Thursday night if you didn't love it. <laughs> I'm sorry to bring it to you. Jack Barr says it didn't work for the audio. That sucks. That's it's worth a shot. You never know. <laughs> now they're messing with each other. Dr. Greensocks, is there a way for a video card that demands 350 watts of power supply when I only have 300? Okay, now here's something you got to know about wattage. Um, I'm actually an electrical engineer, or an applications engineer is what they call me as my formal 
title. Uh, if you don't have the power by the power supply, you're, you're risking not only the lifetime of your hardware, but also the integrity of the, um, the capacitors inside of that power supply. The power supply is designed to withstand a certain amount of current pull on each rail. They have 12 volt rail, 5 volt rail, um, and a couple other rails actually in a standard power supply for a computer. If you pull too much current on those rails, the power supply quite often just switches clicks clicks off and on or it'll keep clicking and it'll shut down. You know, it's an overload protection in the power supply. It's designed to keep you from damaging the supply. Uh, video cards, on the other hand, are actually able to run at lower current pulls when you're not using them. So the software itself will actually allow you to maybe boot up the computer with the lower power supply, but as soon as you actually have a demand on that power supply, your current is going to go up, okay? And so when your current goes up, suddenly you're going to be pulling down the capabilities of your power supply. And as soon as you pull too much current, it's going to click out, flicker, power down, and potentially damage the caps inside of it, and you won't be able to turn it on ever again. Not recommended. Um, you can buy a 350, 400-watt power supply from Newegg for like 30, 40 bucks. Not that I always recommend people cheaping out on power supplies, but uh, it's, it's not worth the effort. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Um, Dr. Greensock says it overheats too fast. Uh, usually, usually they don't overheat. Like if if a uh, like I said, there's a current protection inside of that power supply unit. Okay, what'll happen is it will get hot. Okay, because it's running at its maximum capacity, but it'll only run at its maximum capacity as much as it's allowed to run at its maximum capacity before it trips out and clicks out and tries to power up again and clicks out, tries to power up again and clicks out. And if it keeps clicking like that, it's, keep, it's, it's bad for it because it keeps turning on, pulling too much current, turning off. Turning on, pulling too much current, turning off. You're basically hammering your components with the maximum allowable current over and over and over and over again, which, yeah, can generate a lot of heat and damage components on your power supply, but also can risk other components in your unit. Wouldn't do it. Scared. See, now I'm interested, Rev. Rev 1990X says the Diablo 3 is going to be on the PS4. Sony partnered with Blizzard Entertainment. Don't know how it's going to work on a controller, but that's awesome. I love Blizzard. So I'll be excited to see what they do with that then, because um, Blizzard has a great history of doing games, and I'm kind of excited to see what they'll do with that. Very cool idea. Xord Lightning did an HTML5 test. This is a test for browser compatibility. He did it across a number of browsers. Xword Lightning's a community member, a regular contributor, and I appreciate him doing this. This is kind of cool. Uh, it looks like, as far as HTML5 is concerned, Chrome has a 448 out of 500. Impressive. Opera has a 404. Firefox has a 393. Safari has a 278. And Internet Explorer 8 has a 48. Ouch. For those of you who don't know what HTML5 is, it's going to be an upcoming standard for a lot of mainstream websites. So the higher your rating on that, the more likely you will see a seamless experience when that transition takes place. Sword Lightning says, Batman with a Google belt and Google Glass. Best Batman ever. That would be interesting. That would be interesting. Batman with Google Glass. Maybe it'll have product placement. <laughs> Embedded tech is the mark of the beast. It's in Revelations, everyone. I'm inclined to agree. Bor Tebek Hemlig, I, I mean like Crisis-style nanosuits, like Crisis the game. Oh, but hey, it's not science fiction only anymore. I'm telling you, this stuff is, is actually feasible now. Lord Lightning says, Microsoft used to be cool when they made a sitcom on Windows 95. That was hilarious. Yeah, they, well, I mean, they used to have more fun with it, obviously. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, Rev1990X says, what would you see, where would you see on the PCM Tech Help show in five years? Hopefully, I'll be talking to 40, 50,000 of you and not just 12. And to be honest with you, if I can, within, within a year, grow the show and the community to the point where we can generate content, you know, like quality written articles and tutorials and just free help resources and be able to help people come into the community, that would be like my dream come true. Because ultimately, the reason I created PCM Tech Help, or PC Michiana, by the way, was the original name, 
was because I, people kept asking me questions. I kept ask, answering the same questions over and over again. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put this stuff to video. And so I started putting it to video, and then I would share the videos. I'd say, you know what? Go to this site. Like the downloads are there. The videos are there. Watch these videos. You know, that was how it originally started. And it just kind of like I kept getting more and more questions. And then people on YouTube started finding me. And then I had to change the name because nobody knows what PC Michigan is. Michigan is the the city, the city I live, the county I live in. Um, so it went from a local thing to like a worldwide thing. And so named it PCMTechHelp.com so I could at least keep the PCM. I didn't lose the branding. And so it's really kind of cool. This has all happened in like three years. So in five years, wow, that's more than double. I can't even think of it. Uh, the one advantage I have is I'm young. So I'm 28. So I've got a lot of time to build it. Uh, but at the core, I want it to be a, a grassroots community, a kind of grassroots movement even would be awesome, where we just basically are in the content development environment where we talk about Linux distributions. We talk about all these awesome free alternatives and software. And we not only talk about it, but we show people how to use them. We do great visual tutorials. We do written articles with pictures, or we do... Uh, reviews of apps and how to use them, like little guides on how to use phone apps, things like that, or even all the way up to the point where we're doing video tutorials, which would be awesome too. I mean, the sky's the limit as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but I'm investing heavily now in the community because I want to develop a team or group of people who are awesome at this stuff because I'm only one guy and I'm getting a lot of questions now that I can't answer. My knowledge is limited as with anybody else. But as people challenge me and I'm watching them answer other people's questions, I'm learning. And so it's really been an awesome experience for me. In five years, I'd like to see it just be bigger. The same basic idea, but bigger. You know, I can invest more in marketing and advertising and growing the community and growing the show and getting more and more people watching it and helping more and more people. That's the basic fundamental idea of the show. I would love for that to happen. So we'll see how it goes. I don't have any plan on stopping anytime soon. So stick around. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on a social network. Remember, every like, every share, every comment, every little thing that you guys do, every plus one, it all helps immensely. If I have 11,000 subscribers, if I get 11,000 likes, my God, I will be at the freaking top of YouTube on every search result. <laughs> I mean, it's just something to think about. Every little, it's just like everybody says every vote doesn't count. Every vote does count in the internet world. When Google's weighing what's great with what's not great, every vote counts. That's how it works. It's one factor anyway. Linux will dominate the desktop. They had their chance and failed. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know who's throwing a curveball in this is Google with uh, Chromebook. Chromebook seems small and not intimidating at the moment, but the potential is very scary to any operating system. Chromium OS is so lightweight and so capable of doing many, many things that it would scare me if I had any traditional kernel-based operating system at all. Because it's, it's kind of like a suggestion to the world of saying, hey, you know what? Why are we even using operating systems? Their idea of the future of the internet is that everything will be able to be done through a browser. That is ultimately, I don't know if I'm giving away their trade secret or if they've even told anybody or if it's, an, it's an official announcement they made, but the basic philosophy of Google is whatever it is, we want, to be, we want it to be able to be done through a browser. That's, that's the Chromebook way. And it's not a terrible idea. It's a great idea. Everybody has a browser. Every operating system has a browser. It's going to get to the point where browser technology has become so advanced that even now you look at the software you can use in a browser. Look how sophisticated it is. How far it's come in just eight to ten years. Their their philosophy, their idea is to eliminate the kernel, in my opinion. I'm just I'm not don't put I'm not putting words in their mouth, but they really I see where they see the potential there. That would be scary to me if I was Linux, Microsoft, or any other operating system manufacturer. Of course there will always be a demand for those, but for the average user, where's the money at? You know, it's in convenience, in time, in availability. Uh, so there's a lot of potential there. Tom Prokes, what do you think about 3D printing? It's cool. Has anybody seen these 3D printers? Man, what you can do. I've seen like circuit board printers and stuff that they've done with these too. Man, 
how cool is that? People are printing circuits onto objects, electrical circuits. Man, they can do some cool stuff. Awesome stuff. Well, we re we've reached the question roundup segment of the show tonight. In the question roundup segment, I answer your questions to the best of my ability in a short period of time. Because as you know, I only have 9 p.m. Eastern until 10 p.m. Eastern on Monday through Thursday. Make sure you subscribe at this time because you will show up in your feed next time you're on, and maybe you can jump in for the live show again at that point. Also, make sure you follow me on all the major social networks. We got Facebook, we got Twitter, we got Google Plus, we got Facebook. And all kinds of fun things going on in every major social network. And I will distribute all of the live feeds as they go live right on the show. Make sure you join the community because they've been doing some really cool pre-show hangouts, which I think is the coolest idea ever. I don't know how they actually turned out yet, but I'd still encourage them to continue trying. I believe a couple of them were a lot of fun. Maybe they just just had to start getting the ball rolling. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Also, we'll be more than happy to help you guys out with any of your questions trying to come up with free solutions to whatever problem you might have. That's at pcmtechhealth.com forward slash community. And remember, pcmtechhealth.com forward slash YouTube will bring you to the YouTube channel over 450 free tutorials and fun. We haven't fun yet? Question roundup time. Tom Probst, what do you think about 3D printing? I already said that one. Awesome. Love it. What kind of shirt is that, Craig? Dude, Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Board of Egg Hamley says, I asked in the plus thingy, how do I get a better better at editing videos experience? You said you were using Adobe After Effects, I believe, maybe. It doesn't really matter what software you're using. You've got to start exposing yourself to it. I know you've been using it for about six months. So now is the time to get yourself involved either in a website that touches on advanced topics, but you really want to get yourself involved in something that's kind of interactive. What I love to do personally, and this is just me, this is how I like to learn, when I've done a piece of software for six months, I know all the basics. I know all the essentials. I need to know advanced concepts. It's very difficult to find a website that does a good job with advanced concepts. Time to go buy a book. You'd be amazed at the books that are out there on these topics and what software package you're using, and you will learn tons if you're willing to sit down with it and go through the tutorials that are written in the book. There will be so many things you don't know about this software that will absolutely amaze you. Very cool, very cool. Keep learning, man. Lord Lightning claps for 212 math. Thanks for coming out. 212 math, appreciate it. Um, I know, brother, SharePoint sounds good, but damn it, the users. I know, amen to that. <laughs> what a nightmare. SharePoint is a collaborative. Uh, Lord Lightning says, what's SharePoint? Um, SharePoint is essentially an integrated office collaboration software suite. It's great in theory, as with any collaboration suite. It's like all of your users can work seamlessly with all documents together and it'll work out awesome because everybody will be sharing the same information at all times and they will, their efficiency will quadruple and it'll be amazing. You know, you'll, you'll make millions of dollars and turn around and save time and there won't be 30,000 copies of the same file over the place. Sounds great in theory until you realize the implementation portion of the phase is probably the most difficult, not the software. Getting users to accept a collaboration program is very difficult, especially because most users have different motives for using it. And that's a big part of implementing software packages in the business world. Could 3D printing print a non-Euclidean shape? I can't answer that question, Reb. Jack Barr says, Craig, might have asked this before, but what are your thoughts on each of the following web clients? Gmail, Outlook.com, Yahoo, and any others you can think of. Gmail, love it. Been using it for about seven years. Outlook.com, eh. Hotmail has always been kind of a nightmare for me and per personally. I don't like their spam filter nearly as much as I like Gmail's, but I think Gmail has the most comprehensive one out there. And then you have Yahoo, which Yahoo is decent. Yahoo Mail is very popular. A lot of people love it, and a lot of people have a lot of good experiences with it. I'd probably go Gmail first, Yahoo second, if it were me. Um, but Gmail's spam filter is so comprehensive. It just blows me away from time to time what it can catch. I, ca I get like 70, 80 emails a day. I think 60 to 64 of them get filtered. <laughs> Not, well, I can't say that. I probably get 140 emails a day. Probably 100 of them or 120 of them get filtered as spam. Amazing. Lord Lightning says, my CD keeps ejecting. How can I stop this? Got duct tape? I love Gmail. It's great, says Lord Lightning, but Hotmail's annoying because you got to have tons of stuff. It depends on the user a lot of the times. Whatever you're comfortable with, they're all pretty good. Jack Barr says, I love Hotmail, but Gmail's annoying because you got to have tons of stuff. They both said the same thing. So you both hate it because the other one requires you have a bunch of stuff. 
kind of tells you a lot of times it has a lot to do with the user. Which one are you most comfortable with? They're both great tools. Tom Brooks, Ohm's Law, <laughs> E equals IR. That's right, E equals I over R. Absolutely true, current over resistance. Something you gotta know. Don't wanna pull too much current. That would be bad. PC Pro, SharePoint is when people can set up websites to share information with others, manage documents from start to finish, and publish reports to help everyone make better decisions. Sounds like something on the back of the box. <laughs> it, it does, it sounds great, doesn't it? Until you try to implement it, it's very difficult. I'm not saying the software can't do this, you just have to take the right psycho psychological approach to it. Dr. Greensocks, thanks Craig, shopbot.ca is my, <laughs> my favorite. What's your opinion, Craig, on Windows 95? It was amazing. Any Windows operating system built off the DOS framework was so stable. Did you ever get the blue screen in 95? How often? Gotta ask you that, because you got it a lot less often than 98. That's all I gotta tell you. Most of the operating systems built off the, DOS, uh, .net, uh, the DOS framework core uh, were actually incredibly stable and awesome for the time. So I, I know it wasn't a serious question, but I love it. Craig, what do you want your community to do? I'd love to write some articles, make videos for you. I'm working on that. Like I was talking about, I want to make a submission form where I can lay out in detail what I'm kind of looking for that will actually optimize my publishing capability. So I'll receive the article from you, be able to put the content into an actual blog post article, put you, make yourself a little address box so I can put your bio and all your social network links so people can connect to you in it. And then if you become a regular contributor, I haven't decided what the criteria are for that, then I can actually just give you a login and you can log in and do the articles yourself. Uh, but uh, that's, that's down the line. Again, I'm swamped right now, but um, it, we're going to move in that direction for sure. That's definitely going to become a part of this. Uh, bye, Mr. Chamberlain, says Rev. Thanks for coming out, uh, Rev. Dr. Green Sox, ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. Um, there's anonymous mail. Oh, man, that sucks. So, Colonel, I love KFC. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a little geek humor to end the night. What can I find the before show hangouts? Uh, they will be in the community page if somebody hosts them. And then usually the community members are in charge of that. So I think Tom was going to do one of them. Maybe it was Tom. Maybe it was, uh, I think it might have been Tom that was going to do one of them. Maybe, no, it was Jack Barth was going to do one of them. Um, but really, there's no just one person who has to host them. Uh, you can, anybody can host a hangout in the community. You don't have to be a authorized member moderator or nothing to do it. So anybody can do a hangout at any time. Um, but I strongly encourage you guys to do that, hang out with each other. I'm not the only guy here. So we had a wonderful day. We talked about the Google glasses. It was awesome. Uh, once a week at, hey, oh, uh, 7 p.m. Okay. Good show, Craig. Love the show. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Wonderful show, 9 p.m. Eastern. Had a great time with you guys again. We talked about Google Glass. We love Google Glass. Well, I do. I love the idea. I love what it says about the future of tech. I'm excited to see where we're going to go. I'm really excited to see the OLED stuff come out. I just love to talk to people that are going to be like, hey, Craig, have you seen these, these screens? They, fall, they bend. Oh, my. That's so cool. Full HD. Better than, oh, my God. Night and day. Did you know OLED technology has like pure black and pure white on the contrast ratio because it's an organic material? It's self-illuminating. You don't need a backlight, so it's transparent. Do you guys even understand the potential in this technology? I hope you do. It's you should be like, yes, OLED. You should be so excited right now. I'm so as soon as I heard about it two years ago, I was excited. I'm so frustrated it's taken this long to get out here. But anyways, I digress. Make sure you join the community, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community. The fun doesn't end here because it continues there. And I hang out there as much as I can during the week. It gets my undivided attention. As with all the other communities on here, I just do my best to get into or get to as soon as I can in a timely basis. Remember, this is the PCM Tech Help Show, the PCM Tech Talk Live segment. It's not only a live show. There's tons of free tutorials at the website, pcmtechhelp.com. Tons of free downloads at the website, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash downloads. And I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with this. Leave you guys with this. And it's going to be fun. Thanks for coming out. I really appreciate your time and your energy. I will see you guys at the community.